Gordon, it's great to be talking with you today. Equally. Really, really is. And um, you've written a book. It's called Healing the Masculine Soul. It came right. out in 1988. Now, that was a pretty radical thing to do back in 1988. It really Where did was. That, how did that journey start? And tell us a bit about your, the, the background, your background, sure. perhaps the background of that book. Sure. I'm a son of the World War II guys. My dad uh, actually was a, a teenager during the Depression era. So he and his generation uh, didn't have any options, you know, what color of Xbox to get. They just were wondering if they could get a meal, you know, by the end of the day. And he didn't get to be a teenager. He didn't get to drive around in cars and date and all those kinds of things. And just when he got old enough to be a young man, World War II broke out. So his generation really was characterized by a, a deprivation in so many ways, not just uh, materially, but emotionally as well. And so it was very hard for his generation of men to acknowledge boys and what a boy might need and to, to, to listen to a boy's feelings. Nobody ever listened to his feelings. You're not asking about how you feel, whether you're angry or sad. You just got to go take up your gun and go win this war, which praise God they did. And we owe so much to them for it. However, in, this, in the States at least, uh, the men in my generation grew up with fathers, therefore, who weren't emotionally capable of connecting with us. And so a boy interprets that as, I'm, so, must be something wrong with me. If you, you like something, you move towards it, and you say it's good, and you affirm it. Mm -hmm. my, my, on our generation, our fathers never were able to say, I'm proud of you, or I love you, or give me a hug. I remember when I spent two years in the Peace Corps in Nigeria, and I came home, we had no, in those days, we didn't have telephones or emails or anything like that. I never talked to my dad in two years. I got off the plane, he came over, and he extended his hand to shake my hand. And in that moment, I, I realized, wait a minute, something's got to stop here. And I moved to his hand, and I grabbed him in a hug, and he froze solid. And I, 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 in that moment, I knew we had some work to do, let's put it that way. But you see, what happened then thereafter is this anger began to rise up in a generation of young men saying, why don't you give us this affection? Can't you acknowledge me? Can't you say I'm doing something good? And so... Robert Bly talks about that Robert in his Bly book, talks about uh, Iron lot, John. Iron John, quite yeah. a bit. And he was able to articulate that in a way that I never heard in a church or any other place. Tell us a bit about, you know, you're, you're, you're reading Iron John. What was it like for you? It was so powerful. My, my prayer partner, a friend of mine, called me one day and said, Gordon, you've got to read this book about Iron Chai. I said, wait, just read it. You're, I mean, I couldn't put it down. This guy was telling my story about, about the, the, the shame we feel not having the stuff of manhood and how it makes us uh, fearful around women, unable to get close to each other, how the passivity that we have where we were just willing to sit back and let women and everybody else take over. It just revolutionized my thinking. It really, I, I mean, I, I was... I was stunned for months after reading it. Because you actually had actually uh, articulated that in, in, in The Masculine Soul. And if I remember rightly, Bly actually quotes you. Well, I, I actually, I, I think Healing the Masculine Soul certainly came out of my reading of, of Iron John because I, real, I am a Christian. And when I realized here was a man who was not a Christian, but articulating and saying truth that was striking deep into my heart, I began to ask, I began to pray and say, could we not have a, there is a Christian perspective here. I am a Christian. Couldn't we have, could there somebody write about these true, solid truths from a Christian perspective? And that was kind of the beginning of how I began to wrestle with these things and come up with healing the masculine soul. But as masculine soul came out before Robert Bly. Yes, it did. So you actually, getting you back to the, the, the journey in the 60s, uh, you know, coming home from Nigeria, um, we mean actually, we don't, do physical contact well. We, yeah. We've we, we, we got to learn to hug. I think the, the Europeans are a lot better at this, aren't they? They're much some more of them, tactile. Some of them, but it depends on which part of Norway you're in, I can say. <laughs> I'm out in Norway, there you go. I visited Norway and they were <laughs> they were not quite as No, no, the, the Northern Europeans are very, very uh, uh, much more, uh, but it's like the... Southern Europeans, Yeah, right. Italians, Greeks. Yeah, that And even the, the whole uh, Lebanese culture, the whole uh, Arab culture is sure. much more... Well, I think what, see, what happens is when a man doesn't get, boy doesn't get what he needs from his father, he doesn't get that physical affection, and he needs it, he needs that touch. And I, I have a chapter in my, my second book, Sons of the Father, on the brown ooze, where just a boy just being close to daddy and feeling daddy hug him uh, gives him something that he really needs as a boy. Well, if you don't get that, it, the need doesn't disappear. It goes down under the, under, into the basement. And, and so you become afraid later as an adult man, there's this great longing for the man, the father, to hug you and touch you, if that has to be suppressed, then where does that longing go that we want to hug a man 
And of course, in this world we live, it can be, become distorted very quickly like that. Whereas when it, where if it's focused where it belongs, where it originally comes from as a boy longing for his daddy to hold him, I work with men all the time who get very confused in this area. And uh, what, what, what helps bring them back into centeredness is, is it finally connecting with saying, I wanted to hold my daddy. And that simple truth is so simple, and yet it's like shatters so much of the falseness that's going on in their sense of themselves as, as men.